Good evening, everybody, and welcome to high school basketball here on the Wave Channel 5. As tonight, the Lady Wave of Greenville play host to the Stebbins Lady Indians. With us, head coach Rachel Feely on Coach's Corner. And coach, you know, I'm going through some stats here. Now, normally I don't need a cheat sheet, but they're just some interesting figures. We're coming in tonight averaging 42 points a game and defensively giving up 42 points a game. <laughs> That's right. That's right. How often does that happen? Not very. And, and, you know, and we're looking at the record then, it kind of matches up. Five and six in the league, six and eight overall. Right. And really, I guess the best way I can say about our schedule and how things have played out, we've beaten the teams we're supposed to beat. We've kind of lost the teams that are better than us. And then we have a few losses in there that really could have gone either way. And unfortunately, we've been on the other end of it for most of those. Yeah. And, you know, I'm taking a look back through the schedule. And, and one thing I think is kind of interesting, we shoot 29% from threes, but we're only shooting 31% from the floor in general. We're not a very good shooting team. And the games that we win, we shoot 35%. The games that we lose, we're under 20. And when it balances out, it's just... Um, yeah, I, I wish I had the answer, and I, I you, would, you would think we never practice our shots and everything, but it's just, we're just not a very good offensive team when it comes to finishing. Yeah, and it looks like you're getting yourself open shots. Fantastic looks, and when you break down our shot chart, it's the exact shots that any coach would want. Um, and really, we're doing a good job taking care of the ball. That's been our problem the last couple of years, but um, all of that part's coming together. It's just, right. we got to find a way to finish. Yeah, things look a lot better when the ball goes through the hoop, doesn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> I, we all look good then, we right? All look good then. You know, and another thing I was looking at then, too, uh, as I go back through the schedule, it's like I said, we're 6-8, and eight, but really, a shot here, a shot there, we could very easily be 10-4 and four right oh, now. Absolutely. We lost by two against Eaton. The soap opened up the season, and we missed 20 free throws. We lost on a buzzer beater to Butler. Um, we lost by two at home against Troy. Like, yeah, you're absolutely right. It could just be one thing or another, and um, that's the next part that we got to do as a program is, how do we become the victorious team in those types of situations? You know, looking at the MVL here in the first year of the reconstituted league, it's kind of interesting how it's broken out now. You've got three teams that are really having good seasons in the league in yeah. Tip, as well as uh, let's see Tip, Butler, and Sydney. Right. And then we've got four teams, one of which we're playing tonight, Stebbins, along with uh, Xenia, Fairborn, right. West Carrollton, and then Greenville, Piqua, and... Uh, right. And then actually Piqua just turned around and beat Sydney. I so, it, I mean, it's just kind of all over the place. I would definitely say that Tip is the best team in our league, and just like they have been, and Butler has done a really good job of few, the games we've lost. They've actually gone a way to win those ones, but um, it, it's it's crazy. I would say from that Butler down to Greenville and those games in between, it's anybody's game any given right. night. Um, but then, yeah, after us, there's really kind of a separation on who's down there. So I'm hoping tonight we kind of shrink things together and we play the way that we can. I see we have three road games in a row after this, all in the next seven days. So we've become road warriors. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? I know. We're What is it? No, I think we're home against Piqua. We already right. went to Piqua. I know, but you've got And seven. then after that? Yeah, I think you've got three in a row. Uh, okay, then we're at Sevens and then at Xenia, and then I think we're home against Sydney then. I, I don't know. It all, or pick, I don't it know. all blends together, yeah, right? It really does. It really does. <laughs> Anyhow, well, we're two-thirds of the way through the season. Tournament draw will be coming up here in another couple weeks, yeah, right? Not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then, actually, our sectional got a little bit smaller. So um, we used to be about 17, 16 teams, and now I think there's only about 12 of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got to hand it to you. You haven't got any gray hairs yet on some of these close losses. You're doing very well. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. <laughs> well, tonight we're going to get one against these Lady Indians of Stebbins. We'll be back in just a minute. Take a look at tonight's starting lineups as the Wave take on the Stebbins Indians. Well, we're getting ready for the start of tonight's game as the Greenville Lady Wave play host the Lady Indians of Stebbins High School. Glad you could join us here on Wave Channel 5. Alex Warner along with Jody Flummersfeld and Jody. Got a wave ball club that comes in. We talked to Rachel uh, Kearns earlier in the post or pregame show. A ball club at six and eight overall, five and six in league play, and a team that might have could have would have should have could have been as much as nine and five, ten and four. Right, right. They showed uh, played real well last week. I thought showed a lot of promise. Just need to be a little stronger with the ball at times and make a few better decisions. And I think those close games will turn their direction. Well, we're coming into the last seven games of the regular season. Tournament draw comes up. It'd be nice to get a little bit of a run here. This is Stebbins Ball Club that comes in like 3-11 and 11 overall. And it's been kind of funny how the league has broken down in its first year. The stronger teams, with the exception of Sydney, seem to be up north in the Miami division. The weaker teams down that Valley division. Right, right. It does seem to appear that way for this year. And looking out at uh, Stebbins, they've got some height, and that always hurts Greenville a little bit. Uh, on the boards because we're not very tall. No, we're not very tall at all. 
It'll be interesting to see. Haley Banks has just been gangbusters lately. She's leading the league in scoring, if I'm not mistaken. She's averaging right at 19 points a game, having a great season. Yeah, she had 32 last week, and we believe that was a, a record high for her. I'm not sure everybody, anybody ended up looking that up, but we were pretty sure it was a record high. She'd had 30, I think, before. Yeah, anyhow, so she's been going well. Morgan Gilbert settled, settled down a little bit. We knew she was going to be good, spark to the ball club. Starting to make a little better decisions with the ball. It's a team that we got to make foul shots, too. Absolutely. Um, last week in the fourth quarter, they came back and shot 84% in the fourth quarter. So that really made a big difference in that game. Well, yeah, we're glad you could join us here tonight. This is a, we'll play Stebbins again sometime next week. After this, the Wave are on the road three games in seven days. And they go back down to Stebbins, which is kind of unusual scheduling here. Anyhow, we're glad you could join us here tonight. Jerry and I will be back in just a little bit. We'll take a look at the nice starting lineup since you watch high school basketball here on the way. Lady Wave play host to the Lady Indians of Stebbins High School. Let's take a look at the night's starting lineups. First of all, for the Stebbins Lady Indians, head coach Al Critch. Number 14 is Bailey Roach. She's a 5'4 sophomore, averaging four a game. Number 20, Christine George, 5'7 senior, averages five a game. The leading scorer for this ball club, number 21, a 5'9 freshman, Diamond Baker, averaging eight a game. Averaging four a game is Olivia Newland. She's a 5'8 senior. She wears number 22. And Caitlin Seibel, a 6'1 sophomore, averaging seven a game, wears number 52. The Indians come in tonight, three and 11 overall. They are two and nine in the Valley Division of the Miami Valley League. For the Lady Wave, clad in home white, Forrest Green, under Rachel Feely Kearns. Wave six and eight overall, five and six in the Valley or Miami division of the MVL. Hallie Bankin, the 5'7 senior, wears number two, leading the Miami Valley League, averaging almost 19 a contest. Number four is Naisha Wright, the 5'8 junior. Number five, Abby Yoder, a 5'11 junior, averages three a game. Number 14, five foot senior. Morgan Gilbert averaging eight a contest, wearing number 14, as I mentioned, and Annie Hayes wears number 23. 5'7 senior, averaging four a game. The Wave averaged 42 points a game offensively, give up 42 points a game defensively. Alex Warner along with Jody Flummerfeld, Jared Fender, our cameraman and producer tonight from IMTV, and a decent sized crowd here tonight. Stebbins didn't bring many up. Stephens High School, yep. those of you out, Stephens High School is right across from the uh, United States Air Force Museum. Correct. Yeah. So they had a long drive up here, and uh, when you're 3 and 11, you don't usually bring too big a following from far away, do you? I'm not sure it's in double digits. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, the Lady Indians will be in gray, trimmed in white, and it'll be going to your right. Kind of an unusual situation. The JV contest, Lady Wave won their 10th in a row, played Lady Indians, but that was from Newton High School. Stebbins didn't have a uh, reserve squad, and so Newton filled in. Well, the opening tip controlled by the Wave, and they're going to look at what zones it looks, looks like, like a zone. 2 3 zone. Yeah. Morgan Gilbert penetrates and kicked out of there and stolen back. Good hustle, Annie Hayes, and picked up by right. Nice That's safe. The Get there, Haley. Oh, boy, strong and long. They had a nice ball rotation there. Mm -hmm. So they're attacking this like a 1-3-1 set on offense. You go to right the line. Boy, that's where you want it, isn't it? Yes. It's right it, there. Either take that shot or deal it to underneath a cutter or something against the zone. We just didn't do a good job of relocating yeah. when she got the ball there. We kind of stood and looked at her to see what she was yeah. going to do with it. Well, that's two t turnovers, the first two possessions here, and Stebbins gets into the front court. Wave come out. looks like 1-3-1. One, one, one. Mm-hmm. I always like the 1-3-1 if you trapped out of it. I always thought it worked well. There's some weak spots yep. in it, like any zone. There definitely is. This Haley Bankin, nice hesitation yep. move. That was it. a nice move. You know, she has had a really, really good senior season. 19 a contest, as you mentioned, had a game high 32 the last game you and Ty did, yes. right? Yes, last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And that was a close contest if they wouldn't have come back with the free throw shooting in the fourth quarter. That was it Fairborn? Could have gone the other way. Yes, it's Fairborn. There's a long shot put up from outside. No good. Seibel with the rebound. 
by far the biggest girl on the court. I mean, and she's not a skinny six foot one. Nice right. Right, steal by Nice. You're right. Good pass, Banking. Nah, won't get it. Just a little bit too far under the bank board and had to go right handed that time. Yeah, should have taken a little bit better angle and gone yeah, left handed. Yeah. You know, that's important that most a lot of a lot of young players they don't realize the importance of angles in basketball. Yes. Not only like on that shot there where Haley was a little bit too far under and at a flat angle, but also in passing angles and so forth, especially against zones. Right. You know, there's certain places you can make a nice pass because you got a good angle to get it to the person receiving it. And Here's, keeping the offense right. nice distance apart. Right, spread it out. Well, Diamond Baker uh, puts one up from the dead corner, and Stebbins has their first points, and they lead 3-2. That's a nice shot from out there. I, I watched her warming up, and uh, she likes that corner a lot. She made a lot when she was out there in warm-ups. Yeah, she's just a freshman. This ball club, Stebbins, averages 33 a game, so it's not like they get the ball out and go with it. On the other hand, when you only shoot 26% from the floor. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> nice, nice get drive. in there. Oh. Ah, everything but the roll. And it goes out of bounds and belong to. And we got a little discussion among the refs here. They're going to give it to the wave. Well, that's okay. I thought, thought maybe it tipped off, but mm. you know, it's hard to tell from up here. Oh, well, I don't know. Ty and I for we years <laughs> have called really good games from 50, 60 feet away. <laughs> Especially Ty. <laughs> nice pass. Out of bounds play. Gets it into Annie Hayes for an easy two. And the wave take a 4-3 lead. Just a little over five minutes to go here in the first quarter. And yeah, the one three one, you got to make sure that weak side drops to the basket side there and boxes out. Right. And that's exactly what she just did. You know, Naisha Wright at five three does a really nice job yes. on the boards, just because of what you said. She boxes out bigger players. The next thing you know, then they're coming over the top over, and when you're five three, everybody's over you, the top. Yes, over. you would know that. Yeah, I would. I would. <laughs> Hello, well, away with a one point lead in the ball. That's. The first foul on Baker, first foul of the game, as a matter oh of fact. Oh, my, that's downtown. Yeah, uh, Haley popped that from about 25 feet out. It's been kind of interesting this year watching in college ball how they've moved the yes. three-point line back for the men in college. You know, they'd moved it from 19-9 to 29, and now it's, I think, 22-3, if I'm not mistaken. So you go to a lot of these college games, you'll see, like, three different lines, lines. for three points on the floor. Tell you, you start getting out 22 feet. That's a long. That's for a piece out yes, there. Yes, it is. There's a shot put up and rebound pulled down by Yoder. Abby Yoder's come on pretty well for the wave here lately. Kind of taking the Tia Davidson's place in the starting lineup. Now Morgan can't get the roll that time. Banking gets it back. Has it blocked and the foul? Hey, Ooh. that's on Baker. That's yeah. two. So the five nine freshman, their leading scorer, all of a sudden's picked up two quick fouls here. With a lot of time left yeah. in the first quarter. Yeah, I haven't even gotten halfway through the first stanza here. Well, what do you do, Coach? Well, you leave her best player in, leave her in with two? I would not, but I guess with their uh, yeah. their record, it's probably a different decision to, I, to be made possibly, but I believe she is coming out. Well, Haley Bingen hits the front end of a two-shot foul. I read a real interesting quote by, and I can't think what college coach it was the other day, because they questioned him why he left a player in with three fouls, or he picked up his fourth foul with about seven, eight minutes to go. And the guy said, well, he's my best player. If I'm going to play the last seven minutes, I want my best player on the court regardless. Yes. If he fouls, he fouls. If not, right. at least I, he's got a chance to help us. So, so different philosophies on that. Definitely. Boy, got a girl wide open in the corner and a bad pass picked off in there by Morgan Gilbert. 6-3, your nice score. Nice pass. Oh. Ah. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. Yep, nice pass. Yeah, I don't know if Annie was expecting that. If she was, that had a little zip on it. Yeah. She just wasn't quite ready to haul it in. So 6-3 timeout called on the court by the Stebbins Indians. We'll be back in just a moment here as you watch high school basketball on the Wave Channel 5. Time back in following the Stebbins Indians timeout. Halfway through the first quarter, the Wave with that 6-3 lead. Greenville just staying in that 1-3-1. One, one. We're not really bringing a lot of pressure out on the perimeter, are we? No. I would assume that's maybe because their outside shooter is now located on, on the, the bench. line. <laughs> and they only shoot 18% from – you almost want them to shoot from out there. Yes. And they do. 
Yep, no good, but Seibel no backside out. has it taken out of her hands there. Banking, dribble drive, one on four. And now we set up. They gone man, yeah, they've gone man now after starting out in the zone. Boy, I, I think they'd be able to eat this up. I would hope so. Morgan should be able to penetrate against this ball club. She got to use that screen better. Yeah, right here it is. See, then deal to Annie Hayes got that time. Going to call a foul inside. on Nope, the called traveling. Oh, they called traveling? Oh, I thought they were going to call Newland for the foul. Now number 12 for the way. That's going to be Grace Schaefer, a five-foot junior, comes in and going to replace Annie Hayes. So Schaefer in along with Wright Gilbert. Yoder and Banken right now for Rachel Kern's ball club. That's yeah, JV team, 10 straight wins now. Laura Gorman's got them playing good ball. Yeah, the Fletcher girl did a nice job Skyler penetrating. Fletcher. Skyler yep. Fletcher, mm -hmm. nice job penetrating, using right and left hand. Whoa, 25, Rachel Boger. That's their second three, and we're tied at six all. I didn't think she got set on that, just kind of got it and put it up there with two hands and Nothing but net. No nice style pass. points, but nice. There. Abby Yoder with two. And last game, Abby Yoder just didn't play like herself, and um, she went out and got re-taped. You can see the tape, uh -huh, the K tape the on her knee, and she made some adjustments. Came back in and did a couple, uh, did a couple pretty nice uh, moves. Then, so I, I think that knees must be bothering Other her a little bit. bit. Yeah. You can see even watch her gait when she's walking. Down the court, you can just Kinda see a little gimps. hitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little hitch in the giddy up yes. there. Well, that's a foul on Morgan Gilbert. That's her first. Team's first. And Bailey Roach at the line to shoot a pair here. Yeah, a little strong that time. 2.24 to go. Miami Valley League action. First year be reconstituted as the yeah. MVL. Wow. Good, to, good to be back in with a lot of these schools and I think everything's competitive. Uh -huh. School's the same sizes, basically same outlook on academics and extracurriculars and just a good fit for Greenville. Nietzsche Wright, double teamed in the corner, finally kicks it out here. Banken begging for the ball, takes a three, a little short that time. Pick it up in there. You know, I watch Haley Banken out here giving head fakes and, you know, yes. different moves. She does the same thing when she bags groceries that I can bury. <laughs> so she works there part-time. The other day I was in there. And, uh, she gave me a little head fake here. I didn't know which way the milk was going. You know? <laughs> Good kid. Good kid. This is Morgan Gilbert trigger inbounds after it's knocked off of the Indians. 8-7, a one-point lead under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Grace Schaefer. It Stebbins back in a zone. Mm, on the out-of-bounds play. They're, they're definitely way more active with their hands. I think so, too. You're right. Morgan high off well. almost. I was going to say high off glass. That was almost high off the support behind the bank board there. Going to be a jump situation here, and the possession arrow favors the Lady Wave. You know, it seems like when you, um, you see Stebbins' record and – and Greenville's record, and it's a game that on paper Greenville should win fairly handedly. Mm -hmm. And I, they just maybe just – they're not showing a lot of spark right at the moment, but I don't think. they. Uh, no, yeah, we're not quite into it yet. No. And, uh, and neither is the crowd right no, now. No, <laughs> no, exactly. I've been to viewings of funeral homes that had a little more noise. <laughs> <laughs> than this. <laughs> Rachel Feely's probably – Rachel Feely Kearns probably made more noise than the rest of the crowd put together here. <laughs> Uh-oh. I thought that was going to drop it yeah, once you let it go. It's one of those games where it looks like Greenville should be dominating, and it's a one-point contest. Yeah, traveling, traveling on Grace Schaefer. Yeah. Well, in the lineup for the first time now is Natia Davidson. She'll take uh, Naisha Wright's place. Abby Yoder comes out, and Annie Hayes comes back in. So with a minute and eight seconds left, Rachel uh, Kearns takes a couple players out, give them a little extra breather here. I think it's uh, Libby McKinney. That oh, was it Libby that yeah. came in? Libby came oh, in. Oh, yeah, Libby came in, not yeah. Annie. Okay. Ball out of bounds on the shot. Belongs to the wave. When they have blonde hair and they pull their hair back in a bun, and I don't see a number, Libby McKinney and yeah. Annie Hayes, about the same size, yes. <laughs> same hairstyle. <laughs> 
Libby's had a couple of decent games here lately, too. So the junior coming around. You know, that zone's kind of giving us just a little it, trouble right now. It is because they're just a little lengthier than we are. Mm -hmm. And that I was a nice pass. I think you're right. I think Stebbins plays better in the zone than they do man-to-man. -man. Absolutely. They bring a little pressure out on the perimeter. There we go. Take it up, Haley. There you go. Yeah, I mean, you look down through their lineup, their shortest player is 5'6". Yeah. And uh, that's a way, whale of a lot different than Greenville's uh, roster. Exactly. It's kind of interesting how Coach Kearns puts the defense in this 1-3-1. One, one. They put Haley Banking out front. Nice shot. Number 20 has a three, and we're tied 10 at the end of one. Well, all even after one period of play here in Miami Valley League action. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. All even after one period of play here. 10-10. Uh, Stebbins one and two from the foul line. Wave two for two. Haley Banken had six points in that first quarter to pace the wave attack. And here we go. Well, this is a little tighter ball game than I thought. But yeah, it's just interesting. We've got, oh my. I tell well, you. She's called for the ball since the very moment yeah. she stepped on the floor. Yeah. And she's hit two of them, and it's 13 10 Stebbins. Yeah, as I was getting ready to say, defensively, it's interesting how Coach Kearns has Haley Banken up front on the, the 1 3 1, and yes. then has Morgan Gilbert at five foot tall underneath. And there's reasons for that. Exactly. Exactly. Morgan thought about it, now takes it in off glass. That's Got nice. it. Yep, went over number 52, Caitlin Seibel, and went high off the bank board used, and got it to drop. Used Davidson as a little screen mm -hmm. and used her to be her uh, shot protector. Now here's Morgan. Morgan comes in tonight only shooting 48% from the foul line, and that, that's puzzled me all year if she makes that one. She's yeah. a better shot than that. And, uh, I think what I've noticed the last two games, because those are the only two I've seen, she has a good release, but she flips quick. She doesn't keep her hand extended. Mm, the follow uh, through. The follow through, and it's a real quick drop back down. Probably like how she makes some of those plays from shortstop with a quick throw. Yep, boom. Yeah. There's a foul called out there. Goes on number 11. That'll be in Natia Davidson, her first. That's only the wave second. Four fouls against uh, Sevens thus far. Surprisingly, they're bringing uh, Diamond Baker back in. Uh, well, maybe they'll try a little offense, defense, just get her down here on the shooting end and not. Yeah, could be. Well, that's where she probably wants it, right there. Came loose, picked up. Boy, 25's been their hero <laughs> off the bench so far. Rachel Boger now has eight point. 15 13 nice lead. Libby McKinney, nice. Everything we get nice. it to drop. Yep. You know, talking to Rachel Kearns before the game says, we're getting pretty good looks. We just aren't getting the ball to go through as often as we'd like. Well, again, we talked earlier. Uh, she went in, made a nice move, but then she didn't angle her shoulders to the right. glass. Well, wave trail by two, six and a half to go here in the first half. Oh. Boy, I tell you, Haley popped that one from 22. Yeah, she's... That maybe is not the shot we want Haley yeah. taking there's that green, off. There's green light, and then there's uh <laughs> Yeah, once in a while, it got to be a yellow flashing light, and then maybe once in a while, a red light. <laughs> not every open shot is a good shot. No. Well, I know when you played, every shot was a good shot, that's, right, that's, Judy? I didn't have the three-point <laughs> line to mess with. No, it had too bad. Oh, gone. Even I would have loved to have had the three-point yeah, line absolutely. back in the 60s, late 60s. <laughs> yeah, very late, very late. <laughs> This is Baker. She says, I'm just going to take that from there. And this is it, but backside rebound. That's another problem when you're playing a zone and you're short. Yes. If you don't find somebody to box off, right. if you're, you're going to give up more long rebounds than you'll get. If you're late on that 1-3-1 one, one backside, mm. you're, you're going to be in trouble. That belongs to the Lady Indians. They have a two-point lead and the ball with an even six minutes to go here in the first half. Now you should write. She's really getting her hands defensively on a lot of things. I was nice talking to, to, get it clean was talking to somebody that uh, when the girls had played over at Troy, was Naisha Wright was really frustrating Troy's leading scorer. And she, she can pester you. Yeah. She, she's, she's, <laughs> she's right quick. there. She's quick, and she gets a hand inside. She's athletic. Yeah. 
And here she comes on the dribble drive. Good pass ahead. Let's see if Morgan's got it. Annie Hayes got away with the travel, I, I think. So. Oh, yeah, no. No, they didn't, didn't get away with it. Well, the turnover gives it back over to Stebbins. I mean, that was definitely a travel, but I think that Euro step <laughs> bothers me because what is the difference in those two I, things I right there? I have no idea. I've watched the – well, with the pros, well, they, they take five steps yes. anyhow. It doesn't make any difference with them. Nice Thanks job. That. Good steal in there. Flicked it loose and Bankin picks it up. Dribbles down. And there's Morgan open for three. A little short. Good rebound in there by 22. And then foul. Going to go on right or going to go on McKinney? McKinney. Okay. There's on Libby McKinney. That's her second. Oh, a little late on the getting the sub in. Yeah. Didn't make it in. We've had about three possessions in a row here. We haven't got much out of it, have we? Seibel gets back behind we were McKinney fortunate and, on that. Yeah, we were lucky there. That's it, Morgan. Got in tall timber there that time, didn't she? Yes, she did. Yeah, Haley's open from there the top we go. there. That's yeah. Yeah. Not hitting that right now. I've been no, not very good rotation on the ball tonight. No. Don't know if it's when, when the ball goes up or? there and it looks like a knuckle ball, you know that. Uh, right. Odds are you're not going to make it. Four and a half to go. I think we've only got one more telecast of Lady Wave basketball. That'll be senior day against a Sydney ball At, club. Oh. That comes in ninth. They call block on that. They did, and I thought she threw that arm pretty good. Yeah. Well, Haley Bacon picks up her first. And that's five team fouls on the wave. Five, four quick ones, actually. Right. This is kind of a strange setup for out of bounds play, isn't it? For underneath the basket. Yeah, yes. for under your own basket. They had four of them out past the foul or the uh, three point line, uh, and then they throw it away. I was trying to force that, trying to make something happen, yeah. and it wasn't there. Well, an unforced error, as they say in tennis, yeah, right? I don't. Don't think I've ever seen a That's lineup a strange, like that. Yeah, under your own basket, and then have four players outside the three-point line out front. Good head fake, Haley. Uh, I think she got away with this travel there too. I guess it was either let her get away with the travel or call the foul. Mm. Even four minutes to go, halfway through this second quarter. Yeah, watch, 22's got a pretty uh, healthy left arm flying there when she's yeah. dribbling. Got a little chicken wing going there, <laughs> doesn't she? Right, flicks it. Let's see if Naisha can beat her to it. Look at that hustle by Naisha Right. That was nice. Great, great hustle. Yeah, even brought the crowd alive there a little yeah. bit, Alex. And then oh, a foul. And that's, that's three. Big. And that freshman has three fouls, and that was kind of silly, 25 feet from the basket. And I don't think Naisha's going to shoot from out there. Or Aisha was going to shoot from no. out there. No, Naisha does a lot of the little things, but as far as shooting, I think she's shooting like 10% from oh, the wow. floor for the year. I want to say like 5 for 51. Great something hustle. Like that. Oh, yeah. She does a lot of the dirty work in there. Never can fault her effort. You know, we've been stuck on 13 for quite a while yes. there, haven't we? 15, 13, Stebbins, 3.30 to go first half. Yeah, we need to get a little run going here before halftime. He left uh, 21 yeah, in. Yeah, left her in. Boy, I'd go right at her. This is going to be Grace Schaefer. Nope. And Baker backside rebound. Yeah, that wasn't going to go in. That I'm was pretty pulled, sure pulled I'd left. Yeah. give the ball to Haley and let her go right at 21. I think I would too. We've gone man to man now, it looks like. Oh, no. Well, that's a long shot out there. There's another one of those long yep. rebounds against the zone. Well, we've changed defense. It looks, are we playing man now? Yes. Okay. Looks like they're sloughing off just yeah. you know, pretty decent on it. Oh, nice rebound. Baker coming in from behind. Oh, Jump oh, ball, wave she, ball. She put her hand up this way first, mm -hmm. I thought. That was close. Well, I think we played about three minutes, and the scoreboard hadn't changed, has it? Right. 15-13, 
Again, Wave averaged 42 a game and 13 or 33 a game for uh, Stebbins. Right now, uh, I'd say they're on pace or maybe a little below that, aren't they? And neither team in the bonus. Um, a no. little bit unusual, a little flat. Hey, going to be a quick ball game if it keeps this up. Aisha well, Wright deals it back out after going down the baseline. There we go. Take it up there. Going to be a foul called on number 30. That'll be on, uh, I can't read more, Ebony Sherwood. That's her first. Team sixth. This is Schaefer in trouble in the corner. Throws it away. It's going to be over and back. Pick it up. That's it. And that gives him the ball under the basket. If we'd picked up a little bit earlier, it'd been side court. Now it's right, set up under. Right. Let's see how they approach the setup on this out of bounds play this time. I've never seen that before. cyber has got some height and size in there. You'd think you'd almost lob it in, but that's how we're playing it too, aren't we? Yes. Double team her right there, and she pops out to the corner. I don't think she's a factor out there. No, no. Boy, this is right all over Boger. They throw it away, and now yep. it goes back to the wave. A little over two minutes to go here. Come on, wave. Need a basket. Yeah, we need to even our record in the league here. We're five and six right now. It'd be nice to get six and six and still have about, uh, well, we've got six league games left. Play 18-game league schedule. Now, he's your right off the back of the bank board that time, so. Yeah, maybe he's not really the shot we went and Aisha taking out there that time. That's hard to believe, an 18-game schedule in the league. Yes. Double round yeah, robin. Yeah, double. That's a lot of league games, and that's why, especially for the boys, they only have one home Saturday ball game this year. And that was the one we just that's had. That's the one we just had. There's a steal. There's a nice. Go back. Up and got the round. Oh, everything but bounce yep. in. And she did a nice hesitation move, yeah. but just – couldn't get it to fall. I gave that little hesitation, a little head fake. Got a decent look. Just wouldn't get it to drop. That just plagued the wave all year. This is Boger. That one doesn't fall either. Well, I think there's lids on both yes. ends of the court right now on the baskets. Haley hit this three. There it is. I'll be a son of a gun. Huh. You know, Jody, yeah. I don't think there's been a point scored in the last, what, four minutes? Well, what was the end of the quarter was 10-10. 10-10. So. Stebbins went ahead 15-13. I think it was like four and a half, five minutes right. to go. Yeah, nobody scored here. and uh, Going to burn out the bulbs on the 13 and the 15 on the scoreboard here. Something's got to change. Had a wet spot underneath the basket there. I think why they stopped at that time. Approaching one minute left. Ball flicked out of there by the quick hands of Morgan Gilbert. You know, I've been looking in the paper, and, uh, of course, Morgan – is going to be going over to what, IUPUI to IUPUI. play softball? Mm -hmm. There's been like four girls on the softball team who have signed to go to different colleges. And uh, once again, Lady Wave should be loaded. It's whether they can just uh, get to the state again. You know how hard that is to do? Yes. As great a program as we've had, right? we've only been to the state, what, three times in the last 12 years? And I say only. 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 Boy, that's Fantastic. That's Some fantastic. Never get there. Right. Hey, they finally they got, got 22 that. with yeah. that left left arm. Olivia Newell and uh, been doing that all night, clearing a little space with the off hand and got whistled for the foul. That's an offensive foul, so it won't be one and one. Although that's their seventh team foul. Really, Greenville's had four foul, three foul shots, and uh, Stebbins only two in the first half. I think I said that one game earlier this year is Morgan Gilbert. There we go. No, my goodness. I said that one of the games we had earlier, Jody, where there are very few foul shots through the first three quarters, and then the fourth quarter took forever. Took forever. Because yeah. each team took like 20 foul shots. Well, foul called inside on Naisha Wright. That's 16 fouls for the Wave. Let's see if they're going to play for the last shot here down to 25 <laughs> seconds. Well, she says, <laughs> you know, she's hit three or two of those. She popped that up pretty quickly, and there's going to be a foul called. Well, here we go. we got Haley yeah. Mayo going to the line. Haley Benkin. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Hold the mayo. We, we, just, we just talked about that down on the yeah. bench. Yeah, hold the mayo. <laughs> Coach Kern says, I just still can't, uh, I know. can't do it. I know. 
Last year was Haley Mayo Bankin. This year just right. Haley Bankin. Well, Taylor Yates comes in and going out to Asia Wright. 15 13. It's been that way for over four minutes. And Haley Bankin, a perfect two for two, is going to shoot one in bonus. That's it. Chance to tie this ball game here with 18 seconds to go in the first half. And just the difference is you notice there the rotation on her free throw compared to what she's been shooting well, from her. She's her, taking a little more time on he, this. She's been kind of rushing absolutely. her shot from outside so far. There and it is. Sometimes that's difficult when you come off such a big game, uh, right. shooting threes, shooting everything, scoring 32 points. Um, yeah. The basket some nights not as big as others, yes. right? Oh, here's a still. Let's nice take scale. a chance. Take the lead. Down to seven seconds. Nice head fake. Pretty. Haley Bank and four quick points, and the Wave are going to take a two-point advantage into the locker room here at halftime as they score the last four points and have a 17-15 lead. We'll be back with halftime uh, stats and scoring on the Wave Channel 5 in just a moment. Uh, this is Jody Flummersfeld back with the halftime stats of the Greenville varsity game against the Stebbins Indians. The score at halftime is Greenville 17 and the guest 15. Scoring for Stebbins, coming off the bench is Rachel Boger with eight points, Diamond Baker with three, Kristen George with three, and Bailey Roach with one for a total of 15 points. Stebbins are one of two from the free throw line at 50%. Scoring for Greenville, Annie Hayes has two points, Morgan Gilbert three, Abby Yoder two, and leading the wave in scoring is Haley Bankin with 10. The wave are five for five at the free throw line for a nice 100%. We'll be back in a few moments with the second half of tonight's contest. Well, we're getting ready to start the second half of action here at the Greenville High School gym. Alex Warner along with Jody Flemersfeld. Jared Fender from IMG TV on the camera here tonight. An interesting first half, <laughs> low yeah. scoring. Uh, thank goodness Haley Bankin came through with four quick points there. Gave the Wave this two-point lead here to start the third quarter. Not many foul shots either way, Jody. You know, five for five, banking four for four there in the first half for the Wave, and only two foul shots for uh, Stebbins Indians, and only the one girl in foul trouble either way, and that's Diamond Baker, and that's a big, that's a big three fouls on her. Well, that's a big plus for us, but we haven't taken enough advantage of it at this no. point. No. I think Greenville's a better team than what they're playing tonight. They just. Just seem to be well, a split second behind everything that they are doing. I think you hit it on the head when you said earlier that sometimes, you know, you come in, you you, you know, you think you're going to beat this team, and you just quite don't have that spark or emotion to get you going. Hopefully those four points there at the end of the right. half will help. See if we bring a little more pressure out. I thought we were a little passive sometimes on defense there. Baker is just right what, to the hole. She's, she knows what she's doing. Yes, she does. Missed the shot that time, she and here comes Haley. But she went left-handed at least. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're going to play a diamond and one against Bankin. Am I picking that up that, right? Let's see are, if it comes. Looks are. like a diamond and one there. So it's like a one-two-one one zone with a chaser on Haley Bankin. And Rachel Kearns says, let's maybe kind of spread this out a little bit. And, See how we want to attack this. Yeah, that's what it is. Cutter's going through, nobody with him. So when you face a gimmick defense like this, what do you do, coach? Well, I would uh, put Banking on the inside and put her at the five spot because it's hard to play a diamond and one against a post player. That's true. So I'd put her on the inside. She's got good inside moves. I'd let her post 22 up and go, go that See direction. See if we can get the ball into her. Right. Yeah, because if you put her out in the corner, then you just basically – Taking her out of the, out of the action at the yes. offensive end. Then you're just playing four on four. Yeah. And I doubt if they have too many plays drawn up for that. <laughs> so I'd, I'd, I'd put her in the post, put her in the five oh, spot. Oh, nice back cut and doesn't get a drop, but draws a foul. Pretty back cut that time. Yes. And Seibel, the post player, hit Baker cut into the basket. That's Naisha Wright, second. Baker averaging eight a game, and the freshman, this is her first visit to the charity stripe. 
Going to shoot a pair. A nice shot. Well, has a chance to tie this thing up again. I think the largest lead of the night has been not many points. Not many. <laughs> well, you've only scored 17 I, points. Yeah. Right. Yeah, then misses a second. Here come the wave. There I go, a jinxster. That was good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you're fitting in really nicely. Ty and I for 24 years have been jinxing foul shooters. <laughs> Unintentionally. Nice there we shot. go. Morgan Gilbert finally gets one to drop. She has six, and it's 2016. I think this is probably about the largest lead of the night for either yes. team. And Morgan created a little space and really got a rhythm going into her shot, which I think helps her a lot. The Baker dribbles into, you know, she's a pretty solid ball player. Yes. It's a long shot put up that time by Olivia Newland. That was a nice job of Wright to get her hand on that ball. Otherwise, um, I believe Seibel was going to just st stick that right back in. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised, Jody. You know, Rachel Bozier had eight points off the bench in the first half, and she's not on the court right now. Right. Not quite sure uh, I understand that. There's a lot of things in life in basketball Maybe. I don't understand. <laughs> Might be a defensive issue. I guess I didn't pay too much attention to her defense. Well, no, it couldn't have hurt them too much. Pretty really. active. Yeah, we <laughs> only scored 17 points, so it couldn't have hurt too much. And team four defense. of those were in the last 12 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand the thinking there. Seibel, who's averaging uh, seven points a game, has been held to most of shut out in the first half. See if he hit an eight footer. Got that one. Well, that makes it 2018, Caitlin Seibel. That's another thing I've noticed when I start talking about somebody, sure enough, they hurt us with a bucket. <laughs> Abby Yoder, high post. I'd like to see her be a little more of an offensive threat from right there. Well, turn and at least square up, so yeah. they have to collapse yeah, against a little the, bit. Against this diamond and one, she's gonna have, that's going to be open right, right. there. Yeah. At least be a threat. Oh, there's a... Kind Got of a travel they might have yeah. might have missed. Maybe they thought she didn't have possession of the ball. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm understanding uh just letting Haley stand out there. Yeah, I know. She's got to be involved in it. I think your idea of putting her in a post is the way to go. Well, under five minutes to go here. Wave with a two point lead after leading by two and a half. Morgan nice Gilbert, drive. wheeling, dealing. Nice. And Diamond Baker, really, I don't know she could have done anything at that point anyway, but if she does, she's probably going to get a foul. That's right. Well, up front, nice, you're right, starting to put a little pressure on Bailey Roach out there. She had her beat right there. Up, oh, travel. Be nice if Wave get down here, get a little run going, yes. open this up. I think you get up six, eight points. That's going to be tough for the Stevens Ball Club, who seems to be a little offensively challenged for them to make up that kind of deficit. But we got to get some balls in the basket ourselves. Yes. I think we could eliminate a little dribbling and um, yeah, just, pass a little bit more without putting it down for one, one dribble and then right. pass and one dribble. And yeah. Yeah, one dribble usually doesn't do you much good, no, does it? and it just gives the defense that time to adjust. React. And this will be Gilbert to trigger inbounds at the north end here. Still in that diamond and one. Oh, we got away with yep. No, we didn't. No. <laughs> we got away with the first one, not the second one. Yeah, I remember you used to take dance classes when I was a kid, and that was called a box step. <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> one, two. <laughs> and when I say kid, I mean like 14, 15 years there, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last week. Well, yeah, last week, yeah. <laughs> Still stepping on my wife's toes. <laughs> Halfway through third quarter, way with a 22-18 lead. Trying to even their MVL record at six each. Good pressure by Gilbert out front. Yes. It's tough to run an offense when you're starting 25 feet from oh. the basket. Naisha Wright reaches in. That'll be her third. You know, I'm looking down at the scorer's table and there's no scorekeeper for Stebbins right now. There's not. 
That's why it's the unofficial book. And maybe that's why we're up four points. <laughs> yeah, they still haven't brought the Boger girl in after eight points in the first half. That's, uh, I know there's a reason for it, but I'm not sure what that would be. Yeah, she had over half their points in the first half and then seen the court here in the third quarter. Force that. That's it. Gilbert with it. Got a break going here. Two on one. Dish it to Annie. Nothing there. Back to Haley. And she's fouled by number 22, Newland. That'll be two on Newland. That'll be the team's first here in the second half. This is going to be a quick ball game here. That's McKinney in there. Again. Oh, it's McKinney. <laughs> I'm telling you. 15 and 23, I haven't figured that out because they look alike. <laughs> I'm sorry, Libby and uh, Annie. <laughs> Libby's going to have to let your hair down or something here because it's in the same color, same hairstyle, and they're about the same size. Now, that's the pass we didn't want. This is one on two by Bailey Roach. Then she gets left alone and then double dribbles. It's just a wide open. She, she didn't, didn't realize what to do. <laughs> she yeah. double dribbled. She crossed over herself, I think, on that. And a timeout call. We're going to keep it right here. Jody, you know, you played, uh, graduated in 77, and it was, what, about the fourth year of girls' interscholastic basketball just Correct. to come back in and then coached and just been around the game your entire life. What's some of the big changes you've seen since when you've played in the early or in the mid to late 70s? Well, probably the biggest thing court-wise is the three-point line. And also, there was only one size ball, so we played. Yeah, we played with right. the same size as what the, the, the boys, boys did. did, and that also carried through into college. So even when I was in college, there was still no three-point line, and still playing with the boy size basketball at 20, 29 and a half inches, I believe yeah, right. is what it is. So those two things, as far as the court goes, um, probably player-wise, um, should be the physicality of the players. Right. Um, getting in the weight rooms a lot sooner now than what, what they did in the early earlier days. Um, more of ours was just on our own strength of um, doing you know your own body weight as far as push-ups, right. pull-ups, chin-ups, things like that. Yeah. Um, but I think that and the AAU and the opportunities. Right. Um, but, you know, some of that can hurt you at times, I believe, too. Right. Um, we played because we wanted to played against a lot of the guys because it just made you better. Nobody mm -hmm. told us to do that. It's just <laughs> what you did. And yeah. uh, I think the other thing, too, I think especially through middle school years, I think the skill set has gotten better yes. as far as the basics because mm -hmm. there's camps and, you know, they, the kids right. play a little more year-round. and uh, So I think the skill set in, in a lot of cases yes. is better. I won't say in every case, but here's more. It should Gilbert. be. It should, should be better. Be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's just more opportunities yeah, to absolutely. play. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've played uh, five and a half minutes here in this third quarter, and the Wave maintained that 22-18 lead. Five to three run. Five to three run. <laughs> Uh-oh, get out. Oh, they're going to count that. That foul's going to go on Haley Bankin. That'll be her second. And going to the line to try to make the three-point play complete It's going to be number 20. That's Christine George. She has five points, chance to make it six, and pull her team within one. Just well, kind of not, just not taking good angles and trying to beat the person to the spot they're going to. We're just a little bit behind. George knocks it down, 22-21 Greenville. You know, this is one of those things where this, this whole ball game, just like everybody in the stand just kind of watching. Yes. Nothing really to stir emotions right now. Somebody needs to get a little run here, and hopefully it's the team in white. 22-21, even two minutes to go third quarter. They've taken the box and diamond and one, right. box and one off. Um, yeah. They're they're trying to trap. Which, there she is. There we go. Yep. And she's got that on the cut on the inside. Yep. Oh, they have no I, one back to help. Go I, with her, go yeah. with her. Yeah, I think you're right. If they go into that gimmick diamond and one, just keep Haley inside like that. I know inch for inch, I don't think somebody can guard her. Mm, no. It's too bad she's not about 5'10". Yes. 
Baker hadn't shot much here in the second half. Rebound pulled down in there by Libby McKinney. Wave by three. Let's get another bucket here. Here would be a nice three. Ah, she's a little off looked, on that, yeah. isn't she? But it did look it looked better. Mm -hmm. A little more in rhythm, it looked mm -hmm. like. And it was straight, just a little flat. And timeout, Greenville. Well, timeout in the quarter with a minute, 12 seconds to go here. Wave by three, and uh, we'll take this timeout here on the Wave, Channel 5. After the timeout, Stebbins' ball far into the court. Greenville comes out for first time in a little zone press here. Going to trap in the corner and we'll see how Stebbins handles it. Pretty easily into the front court. Oh, she won. Bo Boger's in. Drug her foot there. Let that one go. Let's see. Well, she's instant off it. I honest to goodness, I don't know why she's been on the bench the whole second half, uh, whole third quarter. She comes in, gets quick two, and keeps her team within one. She has ten points. Seems like she sat out about what seven well, minutes. She did, yes. I don't. I know there's got to be a reason, but uh, well, I'm not smart enough to figure it out. She wasn't on the roster, correct? <laughs> on the original roster, so is there a chance she's a half Coming JV? Yeah. Well, I don't know. She should be playing a lot more. Well, Stebbins now with a chance to go ahead, and Wave going to stay in that little one-two, one-one press. And if they were worried about quarters, they wouldn't have burned this last right. thirty seconds. Oh my! Well, we got away with it there. We were had. Only one defender back. We were guarding somebody clear out in the corner and let her go to the bucket until we got back and got a little pressure. 17 seconds left. Get in, Libby. Nope. Abby Yoder. Nope. No. Seibel had it, lost it. Gilbert somehow got it. And there's going to be a, a foul here. <laughs> the Tia Davidson kind of got caught on the floor there. And I think Naisha took a shot to the mouth. Yeah. So I know the officials, too. The officials talking it over. <laughs> Tia Davis goes, I'm trying to get up. I'm trying to get up off the floor. Well, what are we going to call here? Now they're going to talk this over. And we got, got a technical. Now we've got three officials meeting on this one. You know, overall, I think they've done a pretty good job out there tonight. I, we haven't yes. really talked about the No, no. Yeah. I hope uh, Naisha Wright didn't lose a, a tooth or anything. She did get she, popped in the yeah, mouth. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm going to explain it here. Number five, Abby Yoder, number five. Well, they're talking to Rachel Kearns now. It'll be interesting to see if they go over and talk to Al Cridge, the Stebbins coach here. Well, I wish they kind of explained that. Yeah, they can't go to the monitor, can they? No. <laughs> we won't lie. Thank goodness. <laughs> Well, nobody knows exactly what the call was, including us. It's going to belong to Stebbins, and Greenville stays in the press. Seven seconds to go. Wave with a one-point lead. Be nice to steal the inbounds pass here and get a yes. shot up. Uh-oh. This is Caitlin Seibel. She's got time to get it off. Missed it. Got a good look at it. Yes, she did. Well, there's the horn. That ends three quarters of MVL action. Greenville with a 24-23 lead. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a moment. Getting ready to start the fourth quarter. And banking inbounds. Wave with a one-point lead. Tied at one after, or tied at 10 after one. Wave had a two-point lead, 17-15 halftime. 24-23 as we start the fourth quarter. And turnover right away. Wow. Missed opportunity there. I don't think Stebbins hadn't had the lead second half, have they? Boy, I thought that was going in. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have said that. You know, Seibel yep. puts up a 20-footer and rims it out. We were up four. We were up six and had the did, ball. Did we get up six? I think so. I know it was 2016 at one time. I thought we went 22-16, but maybe, maybe not. Hmm. Haley, get there. No, nothing but net. Unfortunately, it was below the rim. Yep, ball goes out of bounds. Stebbins once again a chance to take a lead. We haven't really heard him with the press, but they haven't heard there us. We and did. There we go. And then we, we throw it away. away. 
That's too bad. All he had to do is bounce yeah. pass it out of there. Libby McKinney, a nice steal, and then just gave it right back. Nice replay a minute already. Out front with it is Bailey Roach. Back door cut. Nice, nice, nice. Abby Yurter got a hand yes, on that. Did. Knocked it out of there. And if she wouldn't have opened up with that, it wouldn't have happened. Well, we just can't hit anything from outside right now, can we? No. We've only had one three-point shot the entire night. That was Morgan, Morgan Gilbert. Gilbert at the top down. And that was a big shot. Yes, that gave it us was. a lead, yeah. Well, it remains 24-23. Alex Warner and Jody Flummers fell. Glad, glad you could join us for a spin a competitive ball game, to say the least. Stebbins trying to come up from down at Vicinity the Air Force Museum and trying to go home with a win here in the league. Diamond Baker. She hasn't really hit much from outside. No. Ball loose and Abby Yoder with it. Haley gave a little head fake like she wanted to do something and pulls it back down. Morgan sets the attack again. You know, we're we're just not moving without the, look look at us. Yeah. I mean, I guess we have time we can waste right now. You can win the game by one point. But uh, try to pull them out of this. And that's that's not bad strategy with the way we've right. been not scoring tonight. So right now you have ten players on the court just uh, basically looking at each other. Yeah, and that's they can stand there for the next I, six minutes if I they think, want to. I think even Jared Fender won't have any trouble keeping up with the action this way. <laughs> Hanging in there, Jared. Yeah, he is. I know. <laughs> yeah, there is there is no reason to do anything. They're going to have to come out. How have the rules changed on that? I mean, back in the day, they would get so long and then a warning that they had to come out. I'm not sure about that because I haven't seen that many games yeah. recently at high school level yeah. that they've done that. Well, we've gone yeah. almost a minute now. Yep. It's certainly shortening the game. And whether that plays to Stebbins' advantage or, yes. or to Greenville's advantage. Well, now, since we talked about back in the old days, I can tell you we played Brookville when you, my senior year. And they they got the tip, and they came out, and this is what they did. And we, just, we stood there and looked at each other and looking at, you know, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Well, now they bring a little pressure out. Yeah. So a little oh, come up, on. Now that's right in front of that official. Uh, there's a wow. Yeah, that, I missed it. A little too close to it almost. Uh, evidently. I mean, she had her wrapped up breaking for the ball. Well, Caitlin Seibel called for the foul, and Haley Bankin, who has 12 points tonight, it's a perfect four for four from the line, goes to the line to shoot a pair. That's the third foul, second half for Stebbins. I hope Morgan sees she's got a girl behind her there. Well, I shouldn't have said it. Uh, you know, you think after 24 years of doing this, I'd learned my lesson. <laughs> Not to say anything about a perfect. Would, would like to see her have a little more arch on her, yeah. on her free throw, get a little friendlier roll. There she goes. Yeah, yeah. That's better. 25-23, Banking with 13. Came in averaging right at 19 a game to lead the Miami Valley League in scoring. Two-point advantage, 440 left, fourth quarter. Boy, I'd let her catch that ball I would out too. there all night long. I like seeing Caitlin Seibel 30 feet from the basket. Uh, she walked, yeah, she walked. And that's there what we go. happens. Good deal. Yeah, I don't understand that offensive set by Stebbins. No. Nope. She is a nice passer, but I don't think she prefers to be quite No, she would be at 25 far. feet from the basket. And she'd already used the her ball. dribble. Exactly. Well, they're going to bring a little pressure up now. They're not going to let us kill a minute at a time. Gilbert just goes right through it. Yeah, they thought about she, it. Yeah, she can back it right back out. Oh, man, they missed we, it. That was a cut there. Could have gotten her the ball. We just don't need any silly shots no. or silly passes, to be honest. Yeah, approaching the halfway mark here in the last quarter of regulation. Wave up by two. This reminds me a lot of the uh, Vandalia ball game where it was Whoa, low 22. scoring. Yeah. Yep. And to their advantage, Stebbins' advantage, that's only their fourth foul. So They've got to start giving some fouls. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Vandalia game was a low-scoring game like that. Unfortunately, that's the one that's 
Vandalia won on a last second bank shot. Oh. Right at the buzzer. But basically the same scenario, mid 20s, things slowed down quite a bit. See, I'd much rather see her dribble around and bring that out with this kind of time than sure. I would try to make a pass that doesn't have a good angle. Right. <laughs> Anytime you can get squared back up to the basket, it's a benefit. Mm -hmm. A lot of strategy going on from both coaches here. Oh, could have taken that in most likely. Down to 312. Goodness, this is a short, short fourth quarter. Nice job, nice job, yep. nice job. I told my wife I wouldn't be home until about 9.30. It's only 8.30. <laughs> I'll have to come up with something to do for about 45 minutes here the way this is going. There's a foul. Yep, you can't, foul go, can't go to the fair lawn. Nope. <laughs> I see they're remodeling that right they now. They are. some trucks there I saw today. It's going to be a Mexican restaurant, I think. Yes. And a timeout called by Steven. So 2.52 to go. And the wave with a 25-23 lead. And we'll be back in just a moment. Well, let's see what happens here. 2.52 to go. Wave with the ball side court. That's five team fouls on both squads right now. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how much pressure Stebbins brings out now. Really, the Wave have killed about almost two minutes on the clock here with this two-point lead. Morgan could probably dribble away quite a bit of this. Well, and also, number 22 is pretty foul prone. Right. And uh, I, if you're going to go at somebody. Here, right there, get in. Ah, that maybe was a little bit rushed to take at that time. Yes. Had a good look at it, just a little off balance once you put it up, kind of a floater in the lane. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Boy, I'm glad you didn't finish that. Wow. That was a really good, good opportunity for them to yes, tie this did. game. Yes, it was, absolutely. She got in the low post, made a good move, and then just didn't finish. 2.12 to go. Can the Wave hang on and pick up win number six and even their MVL record? We're going to find out. Boy. Maybe they don't want a call foul. I don't know. Huh. We're not going to go, still not going to go to the free throw line. Oh, it's got away with the travel there. You think? I don't oh, know. that's it's a that Euro step. step. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't well, like yeah, it. She draws a foul. I guess I'm old school. I just don't like it. Traveling's traveling. That'll be Seibel's fourth. Haley Bankin has 13 to pace the wave attack here tonight. Going to shoot a pair. Short. Got, Got a the roll. friendly roll. Got the home advantage there. The friendly rims of Greenville Senior High School Gymnasium. We were talking about that the other night. We think this is the 58th year for the gym. Wow. Hits them both. Well, that opens it up a little bit. Gives us a little breathing yes. room. 150 left. Wave up 27-23. Haley Benkin now has 15 of our 27 points. And I still like how they're picking them up at the top here right up to half court. Now we've got their center with the ball again. I don't understand. No. How Stebbins is playing that. They kind of open it up for Baker, but Seibel drop step, forces it. Now that wasn't really a good shot. She's got a lot of work to do, but there's Baker, brings it back within two. We fell her to six points. Yes. 27 25, 115 left. Yeah, it could go down to the wire, see if we can hit some foul shots at the end. Oh, tight tight ball game is always who can make the foul shots down the wire. I tell you, they're definitely letting them bump around mm. quite a bit. I'd back but out. you know, uh, I will say this, Stebbins, they're bodying this up, but they're not reaching in. Yes. Until right there. <laughs> Boy, I'm good at that, huh? <laughs> That's Bailey Roach picks up her second, and we're going to shoot one and one, and so Libby McKinney. Libby hadn't scored tonight. Going to go to the line in a clutch situation. Shoot one and bonus. And they're going to try to ice her. So I'll take time out. We'll keep it here. Take a look at the uh, upcoming schedules. We kind of wind things down here on another telecast season here on the Wave Channel 5. 
Uh, Brian Stickle and I'll be back uh, two nights from now as the boys host the Butler Aviators. Butler's uh, kind of an average club. It's not one of the stronger Butler ball clubs I've seen. So they come in here. We'll have that game uh, that will be played on Friday the 24th. Brian Stickle will be back. Ty will be back. Ty's down in Arkansas. His son, yes. Nick, uh, moved with Proctor and Gamble down there for three or four years to Fayetteville, home of the University of Arkansas. Right. So Ty went down and he thought, well, I'm going to get a chance to see Kentucky play Arkansas. And then he found out the tickets were going for about 250 bucks oh. a pop. He said, I don't need to see Calipari that much. Yeah. So. But anyhow, Ty will be back along with Brian Stickle. That will be the boys against Xenia. Then the last two telecasts of the season – It'll be senior day as the Lady Wave play host to uh, Sydney. And Ty and I will have that game. Ty and I also will wrap things up for another year, our 24th, on senior night for the boys as they play host to the West Carrollton Pirates. And that's on a Tuesday, Tuesday night. Yeah, that's unusual, uh, I'm sure. Tuesday night. Yeah. Well, when you only have one home game right, right. on Saturday, that's how it is. So anyhow, four games after this. Glad you folks watch these games here, not only here on the Wave Channel 5, but also on YouTube on demand and uh, we've had quite a following on YouTube. Well, a little under a minute to play, Libby McKinney. Her team's up by one and misses the front end of the one and one. Stebbins with a chance to tie, possibly take a lead. Been saying that the whole second half, haven't Yes. They? And they run that set with Seibel out front. That's just hard to believe. She'll get in trouble here. Finally gets rid of it, five seconds, traveled again. That's the second time she's traveled in the last three times she's had it out front. Right, and you know, to be honest, I have a little bit of trouble faulting her because I'm not sure why you'd have her out there yeah. playing and that position. And her teammates aren't doing a good job no. to go help her either. No. Well, here we go, 40 seconds. Morgan Gilbert can control things from out here. And there's a foul to reach in. Goes on number 20, Christine George. Well, Morgan Gilbert is one for one tonight. Going to shoot one and one. Well, let's see if the senior floor leader can uh, make this a two-possession game here by converting a pair. Got to hit the first one. Come on, Morgan. Nice That's arch. It. Look good. Gives her nine points for this evening. Mm -hmm. She and Haley Bacon have scored 24 of the 28 points out there. <laughs> nice, nice. boys. Cool under pressure. Yes. 29-25, 37 seconds left. Stebbins going to be forced to get it down court. Wave with still a little pressure, full court. Right flicks it out of there. I'd like to see her move her feet and not reach because, boy, you never know how they're going to call well, we don't, the Well, yeah, we don't want to put them on the foul line with the clock stop. Well, we do have a couple to give, but, know, still, but still. Yes, exactly. No reason to get them any closer. Seibel still outside with it. Yeah, she just looks uncomfortable out there, yes. doesn't she? I just don't understand that offensive set. We've done a good job of keeping them out of the lane. We're down to 18 seconds. Forced the shot up and oh. in. Wow, number 20, Christine George. It's 29-27, 12 seconds left and a foul called. 22 with it. That'll be five fouls on Olivia Newland. Going for the ball. Stops the clock with 12 seconds and a wave up 29-27 and Haley Bankin. With they, 15 points, goes to the line and shoots the one and bonus. They definitely could have called a player control foul after she made that shot. Mm. I still think the shot should have counted, but she definitely fell right. in. Yeah, fell into a yeah. looked like a dead stop wave player. Yep. Time out on the court. We'll keep it right here. Greenville. After this, as I said, they uh, go on the road for three straight ball games. Now, I'll see if I can pull that up. I know they've got Stebbins coming up again shortly. Yeah, let's see what we got here. So after this, they go to tip, and that's going to be a tough task yes. over there. So this game's being played on Wednesday night. So they go to tip on Saturday, turn around, go on Monday to Stebbins, and then Wednesday, a week from tonight, go to Xenia. i tell you what, those last two were fairly long trips back-to-back -back on a Monday-Wednesday yes. after playing a tough tip ball club over there. So now the only We need to part, win this game tonight. Yes. At least it's good that their exams are out of the way. So, uh, Right. Yeah, they just started the uh, first day of second semester. Right. Here. Well, let's set the stage again. And Greenville and uh, Stebbins tied 10-all at the end of one. 
Wave had a two point lead, 17 15 at halftime. Had a one point lead, 24 23 at the end of three. And with 12 seconds left, Haley Banking to shoot the front end of a one and one. Her team leading 29 27. I would say if she hits them both, that hopefully it ice the ball game. Right. Gotta get the first one though. And not to make excuses for the Wave, but they have had a long weekend. They had Monday and Tuesday off, and sometimes when you're not in that rhythm of school, you right. just get a little out of sync. All right, Haley Banken, the senior. 15 points for the night. Let's see if she can make 16-17. Got it. Okay, that makes it a three-point game. One more could ice this thing. A lot better, lot better arch on these last couple free throws, too, of hers. Nice. Well, the two senior leaders, Bankin and Gilbert, come through. Four clutch foul shots here in the late going. And Greenville takes the timeout, and we'll take timeout here on the Wave Channel 5. All right, here we go. 12 seconds left. Stebbins ball out of bounds far into the court, and a Wave with a four-point lead at 31-27. Pressure this no foul. This little pressure, yeah, pressure exactly. Pressure no foul. Wave have a foul Don't to give. Reach. Bozier throws it up, no good. Baker with the rebound. No foul. Yep, no we're gonna take this home. How about this? 31-27, your final score. The Lady Wave hang on and take home a Miami Valley League victory. Jody and I'll be back in just a minute and wrap things up here on the Wave Channel 5. Final score tonight, Greenville Lady Wave 31 and the Stebbins Lady Indians 27. And a ball game that the largest lead of the night was what? Four or six. Four or six, something like that. It came down right there in the last quarter. The Wave didn't score a single field goal, <laughs> right. but hit seven foul shots. Haley Banken, five straight foul shots. Morgan Gilbert, two clutch foul shots. Yes. That was the difference in the ball game. Absolutely. Um, just probably not uh, the way Coach Kearns would have liked the game to have gone, but by golly, they... Uh, <laughs> They stuck with it and came out with a victory, and that always makes things a little easier. Hey, a win's a win. A win's a win. Let's take a look at the scoring. First of all, for Stebbins Lady Indians, Bailey Roach had a foul shot for a point. Christine George had eight points, six for Diamond Baker. We kind of shut her water yes, off pretty yes. well. Rachel Boger had 10 points to pace her attack, and I uh, again, I'm a little surprised she didn't see more court time there right. in the second half. Because eight of them were in the first half, That's I believe. Right. Caitlin Seibel had a basket, two points. They were three of five from the foul line, total of 27 points. And uh, Jody, you want to take a look at the wave scoring there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, finishing the game with two points was Annie Hayes, two points for Abby Yoder, 10 points for Morgan Gilbert. Nice and like game. you said, some very clutch free throws and 17 for Haley Banken to round out the wave scoring of 31. Yeah, and the wave ended up 12 of 14. 12 14 for the foul line. But we had the right people at the foul yes, line in clutch yes. time. So anyhow, so the Wave go on the road now for three straight ball games. They even their market six and six in league play, seven and eight overall. Stebbins falls to uh, two and ten in MVL action, and they are now three and twelve. Jody, great working with you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Good Thank luck. You. She's heading out to uh, Guatemala. Guatemala here in a few days on a mission trip. It's going to be gone for a while. And thanks for helping us out, Jared Fender on the camera as always. Appreciate that. Once again, the final score. 31-27 in favor of the Lady Wave. We'll see you here next time on the Wave Channel 5 as the, lady, as the Wave boys take on the, uh, I just forgot who they take on, <laughs> take on the Butler Aviators. Butler. We'll see you again here on the Wave Channel 5. Good night, everybody.